in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who sent your only begotten Son into this world to free the human race from its ancient enslavement, bestow on those who devoutly await Him the grace of your compassion from on high, that we may attain the prize of true freedom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, People of Zion, you will live in Jerusalem and weep no more. He will be gracious to you when he hears your cry. When he hears, he will answer. When the Lord has given you the bread of suffering, and the water of distress, he who is your teacher will hide no longer, and you will see your teacher with your own eyes. Whether you turn right or left, your ears will hear these words behind you. This is the way. Follow it. He will send rain for the seed you sow in the ground, and the bread that the ground provides will be rich and nourishing. Your cattle will graze that day in wide pastures. Oxen and donkeys that till the ground will eat a salted fodder, winnowed with shovel and fork. On every lofty mountain, on every high hill, there will be streams and watercourses. On the day of the great slaughter, when the strongholds fall, then moonlight will be bright as sunlight, and sunlight itself be seven times brighter, like the light of seven days in one. On the day the Lord dresses the wound of his people and heals the bruises his blows have left. The Word of the Lord Happy are all who hope in the Lord. Praise the Lord, for He is good. Sing to our God, for He is loving. To Him our praise is due. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and brings back Israel's exiles. Happy are all who hope in the Lord. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up all their wounds. He fixes the number of the stars. He calls each one by its name. Happy are all who hope in the Lord. Our Lord is great and almighty. His wisdom can never be measured. The Lord raises the lowly. He humbles the wicked to the dust. Happy are all who hope in the Lord. Alleluia! Alleluia! Seek the Lord while He is still to be found. Call to Him while He is still near. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made a tour through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing all kinds of diseases and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. He summoned his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits, with power to cast them out and to cure all kinds of diseases and sickness. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them as follows, Go 
rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. You receive without charge, give without charge. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, we heard that the harvest is rich, but the labors are few. Very quick, we connect it with vocation to the religious or priesthood in mind, isn't it? Maybe not, but at least for me, yes. Upon reflecting on today's reading, I remember the pre-COVID time. In Advent time round, my parish priest and his assistant started to go out stations, chapels to give compassion. So there will be less crowd in some parishes or on the parish confession day itself. Despite they have gone to out stations, they still need help from neighboring parishes to help in giving confession. Now, Advent is a time of waiting for the coming of our Messiah and the Church in a special way, also ministering and inviting all to a sacrament of reconciliation. A time for us to reflect our relationship with God, how we have missed the mark in our life and to reconcile with Him, our neighbors and ourselves. In reconciliation, we receive graces freely, a reminder for us that God is merciful, He loves us, and surely He is always there waiting for us to come back to Him. And He is also forgiving, and since God loves us freely, so can we at least try to extend mercy and love to others, especially our family members, without charge as well. I know it may not be easy for many of us, but surely we can continue to ask for strength and help from God because He always listens to our cry as Isaiah has reminded us in the first reading that one day the Lord truly will dress us the wound of His people and heal the bruises His blows have left. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.